welcome back to the channel. Today we're heading to Desertland uh, in Orlando on International Drive. I thought it was in a completely different place, but it's like five minutes from Universal Studios if you're going more away from International Drive to like SeaWorld and the Convention Center, so going the opposite direction. Um, this museum supposedly has 2,000 cars, which I had no idea it was that large. It's one of the largest private auto museums in the world. Um, and it's worth about $200 million. He has a huge collection of Batmobiles, uh, James Bond cars, movie used cars, supposedly just a huge uh, selection of cars. Here, Bonnie and Clyde car. That's pretty neat. Obviously this one has a, a modern 350 into it, so that's pretty cool. Obviously a, a really big collection. This is pretty neat. They, I knew they had some more of the, um, the Hollywood cars in here too, which is pretty cool. So we've got one of the Tucker torpedoes from uh, the Tucker movie. The Grinch car, which is kind of neat. This Green Arrow car, uh, Green Hornet, excuse me, which I believe was based on a Lincoln chassis, right? Oh, no, it was a Chrysler Imperial, excuse me. So Black Beauty, so this is another one of the cars from there. So pretty cool. We've got the, the uh, Mystery Machine. And then, you know, we've got a couple of the cars from the Dukes of Hazard. Again, you know, we were at Cooter's Garage last year. We shot all of these. Um, you know, it's pretty neat. So this would have been one of the earlier years of the cars. As they went along, the cars get a little bit more modern. This would have been like a first season. Dixie's Jeep, which is cool. Obviously, the generally, this one's a little rough. But again, these are so much fun. The 20s. But this, to me, was the one I was most interested in seeing. So this is the world's longest limo, the world's longest car. When I was a kid, like I said, this was a big thing on like, that's incredible, or you'd see this on like the, the TV show. And I was just talking to one of the guys that works here, super helpful, by the way, which is great. And this car, again, they had to cut into pieces to try to get on a truck, because it's over 100 feet long, so they couldn't do anything. And it doesn't really turn, um, because, well, again, can't really do it. So I'm gonna try to make it more like a link bus where they can actually put a centerpiece in so they can go left and right with it. But I remember always they were talking about this car because it had the, Helipad, the jacuzzi, which is so neat. So very by models and by country. We've got Israel, we've got, I think I saw Paris. We have a Duesenberg section. So we got a little golf cart here, but a couple of the real Duesenbergs. I mean, the style on these cars is stunning. Um, some of the most beautiful cars ever made. And you know, right here you get these two beautiful roadsters are just amazing. Um, you know, this again, this is pre-war, not necessarily my neck of the woods or my, my favorite but you can see this is one of four to exist. Now this collection is somewhere in the neighborhood of $200 million, which is absolutely incredible as well. So very cool to be able to go and see this, you know, literally five minutes from Universal Studios. So this is um, Israeli cars, which I don't know anything about. So this is kind of cool to see, uh, to be able to come in and see something different. You know, as a car person, it's not often you see just cars and brands that you're not all familiar with at all. And this is completely different for me. So these are kind of neat. You know, I'm getting a little bit of the, um, Soviet vibe with some of the cars and some of the setups, you know, very simple, very rudimentary. Uh, obviously, Studebaker, we know there was a, a US car company. But Sabra, I do not know at all, but these are pretty neat. And again, you can see some of the, you know, this one to me, it particularly has a little bit of a Ferrari vibe. Um, and you can see that little bit of style or what they were going for on that so kind of a cool car again something different that i don't know very much about so it's very cool to see french cars with the citroen renault uh, i noticed the french cars was very unique and strange they always um had their own style france has never kind of uh, kowtowed to anybody they do their own thing they're so different from anything that was else was in europe at the time um and that's kind of neat you know again i do dig when people you know they kind of do their own thing and this this is kind of cool uh, you know, again, seeing these old trucks like this too, where, you know, you see the utility, you know, I'm a huge fan of seeing like older utility vehicles. So always very cool. Um, you know, we're going to head over to here, which is the Italian cars. And it looks like it goes right from there into our German cars. And you can see that, you know, his proclivity for a lot of the smaller cars is pretty cool. You know, we've got a bunch of the Fiat's in here, uh, an Alpha. You know, this Alpha was pretty neat. I remember when it came out, it was, uh, this was an 80s car. This would have been like early to mid 80s. It would have been the Alfa Romeo Spider. And when it came out, it was pretty different. And this might be a little later, because this is an airbag steering wheel. But it had this, the shifter right in the middle 
of the dash, right? So it wasn't down where most shifters were, it was right in the middle of the dash. And a lot of people really liked that. They said it was actually really easy to kind of control the car. It was a more natural hand position when you were driving. So this was kind of a unique car. And this actually is a 19, this was in 91, so this would have been in the later version of this. And I should have known these wheels were more the later version of the wheels. But this was kind of a unique setup, very cool. We got this kind of cool little Fiat right here. So it's a little 500, looks like it's souped up a little bit. Um, and these had a, you know, a little bit of a renaissance just a few years ago when the Fiat kind of released these cars again. And you had you know, similar versions of these. Now you see our German car section again, the proclivity, proclivity for the smaller cars. We've got a lot of Volkswagen Beetles in here. Let's see, we've got a couple of Porsches, um, you know, some of the Speedsters. I would have thought this was an Isetta, so I don't know what this is. So that's the Porsche. Um, I, yeah, this is, I don't know what this car is. It looks ex a little bit like an Isetta. Um, geez, I am super unfamiliar with that car. And then obviously the Carmen Ghia, as we know, the thing, which is kind of a fun runabout. Um, these cars are neat because, you know, again, it, it is a high value collection, but there's not like crazy high value cars here. Some of the, some of the other cars you get into, we'll go back and take a look at, are really expensive, like the movie cars, but seeing like the basic cars in here, there's really nothing like crazy dollars in here. Like there's some stuff that's worth something, like something like this Beetle's really nice and it's very well done. Or you get, you know, one of these like older Mercedes from the 50s in good shape. It's, they're worth something. There's our Isettas here, which are cool. We've got our Volkswagen van, uh, van. So we're gonna go back through and see the Russian cars and then we'll check back out to see the American cars. Huge collection of, of bicycles and micro cars. We'll go out and check out in just a second. So here's our Russian stuff. And I talked about that when I looked at some of the Israeli cars and they came with a similar vibe. You know, the, the Russian cars, unfortunately, were so far behind at the time. I mean, they were, you know, this is an 82, right? So you look at this car and you think about the rest of the world had an 82. You know, 82, you would have been driving, uh, you know, a Honda, um, you know, maybe a Chevy or a Ford that was just so many light years ahead of what you had here. And they just were not great cars. They were, again, made for the people, uh, relatively cheap. You had to have a lot of money or be in a great status to own one of these cars in the Soviet Union at the time. So it was definitely much more challenging. And these cars were not, again, trendsetters or, you know, great automobiles. So we get into the British cars. Now, I said there wasn't a lot of high dollar stuff. In this room, we do have some high dollar stuff any rolls royce that has gone way up now these cars have been expensive for a long time because the older rolls royces but even recently you've seen stuff like these which were literally dirt cheap up until maybe five or six years ago these have started to really come up so these bentley's and rolls have really started to come up so the bentley 8 the silver shadow uh, we got a corniche this is like a flying spur sorry the azor so these have come up in value quite a bit recently too which is pretty cool so this is just a crazy size collection. Again, it looks like we have some more of the European cars, some more of the British stuff. Uh, and these are some more, of the, again, a beautiful Rolls Royce right here. Now this is a stunning car. We've got an MG replica, a little mail truck. Um, you know, these, these cars right here are the cars that were, you know, the reason that, you know, the. Corvettes came out, right? The, the, the soldiers that were over in Europe in World War II started driving these little sports cars, fell in love with them, and then all of a sudden they came back home and they didn't want these big American cars, they wanted something more sporty. And Chevrolet, when they made it, it was a Blue Flame 6, it was an automatic, they didn't have to make anything like crazy fast because the, the stuff they were driving was little four cylinders um, that were just fun to drive around and whip around in. And it kind of started our whole sports car revolution we had over here with the Corvettes and then even the early Firebirds, I'm sorry, early Thunderbirds. When you look at these old Rolls Royces, we shot one at a car show not too long ago that would have been like a 70s. What I'm always shocked by is just the coachwork is so beautiful on these. I mean, just the, the lines are so nice, the leather, the walnut, all the wood trim, everything's just so nice in these cars. And they just, oh, it just looks, you know, it's so funny. This was like, even though it's old, it kind of it was that futuristic old style that always looked ahead of its time from when it was out, which was very nice. This is a pretty cool little mini. I gotta send a picture of this one to my wife because she'll love this car. And the, uh, with the little wooden sides on it, so like a, a mini Woody, with like 10 inch wheels is very cool and very different. Our very movie. Neat. So it's the original 74 Falcon. Um, you know, the body's all, you know, one of the original cars. Now I don't believe, much like the Fast Ferris, I think the blower was fake on this, but I don't know if it actually worked. But it's still cool, like it definitely a throwback to the 70s. 
side exhaust, the black mag wheels. This is pretty cool. So this is uh, just such a very cool car. And this is, again, one of the actual cars used in the Mad Max movie. We've got a couple of the cars from the Fast and the Furious, including the Grand National that they wrecked in the Fast, um, Fast and Furious, right? So yeah, so it's Fast and Furious. So this car was one of the ones that was in that tanker scene that got damaged. Um, looks like we actually have one of the eclipses from the movie. I want to see if they actually give us a note here that it's actually one of the real cars. Because the wheels do look different on it. So I don't know if this is actually one of the real ones from the movie, but it looks like it's just signed. I'm trying to see what's signed by. It does say it's signed by the Fast and the Furious. I'm not sure if it's one of the real cars from the movie, but it is pretty cool. And then um, you can see this car from The Great Race. I don't know the movie, so I can't speak to it all that well. But we do get into the, car, the movie car section. I want to go through and take and shoot a bunch of these. So I'm guessing, yeah, this is the Miami Vice, the Ferrari Daytona replica. This is the car we talked about. This car was, um, Ferrari basically said, hey, just get rid of this car and we'll actually make, we'll give you an actual real Testarossa to use for the show. So this was a replica, had Corvette running gear. They destroyed it and they actually brought in a real Testarossa to replace, which was pretty cool. The Mach 5, now when this came out as a kid, I really liked Speed Racer. I don't know a lot about this car. I'm not sure what the platform was made on this or how they did this uh, or where it came from, but it is kind of cool. The body style, the bodywork is amazing. Again, I always assume this was probably based on like a Corvette chassis, but I don't know 100%, but it is very cool looking. The style was cool. And I remember they made a live action movie. They did a nice job with it. So we have the Magna PI Ferrari. Now at the beginning, it was a 308. So this is a 308. So this is interesting. This is a 79 308. So this is where I got rid of myself into a little bit of trouble at that car show. Remember we talked about that 80, 85 or 86, we saw 328. And that 328 had the same wheels as this 308. And this is where I got a little bit confused because the, three, the 328s typically had more flush wheels. I love the styles on these. These were like 15 inch wheels. They had a little bit of a concave. This I think is a really good looking Ferrari. I think it's one of the best looking Ferraris they've ever made. Uh, and truthfully, I think it's you know, right up there with the 255 GTO. And I think it's so much nicer than anything Ferrari's doing today. Now these weren't particularly fast, zero to 60 in the mid sixes. They were a three, a three, three liter eight cylinder making about 300 horsepower. Uh, with a gated shifter, it was a five speed, but beautiful leather, very, you know, gorgeous style. And one of the best looking cars on the road when you saw it. <clears throat> so again, you have the car from the Dick Tracy movie, the Madonna car, a replica of James Dean's car unfortunately that he ended up passing away in is his spider 550 he was killed in a car accident in that car uh, i don't really know this one it looks like obviously it looks like from the austin power movies so i'm not super familiar with it but kind of cool so we've got a hummer h1 not sure where that's from one of the volvos from the saint again this is a neat car that volvo made that i uh, was kind of sporty and this is uh such a difference from them this was the, this would have been the roger moore saint not the later val kilmer movie that came out but this was kind of a neat car one of the George Barris cars, the Monkey Mobile, super cool. We have a couple other George Barris cars over here we'll get to in a second for the Monsters. But Barris was making some crazy stuff back then and this car is really neat. Um, haven't seen one in person, but this is such a cool car right here. I don't know the motorcycle, if I were to guess, maybe it's from Street Hawk, but I don't know 100%. Uh, obviously the A-Team van, so the GMC van from Mr. T. The similar wheels you'd have from the Dukes of Hazard car. Uh, this was super iconic when I was a kid. Everybody was digging these. So I'm gonna guess these motorcycles are from the Lawnmower Man. I do not remember them. I'm not gonna pretend like I do. Uh, one of the Mr. Bean cars. So that's pretty neat. Uh, you know, again, a little 1960s Mini, very cool. This is Spider-Man, I guess, from one of the Spider-Man movies. Probably the van they used that Spider-Man when they actually were trying to catch the um, Michael Keaton's character and he, they were actually in the van, maybe. So that's kind of cool. Knight Rider car right here. I got to take a stop and take a picture in just a second. Send it to my friend Jeff. There are two of them here. He loves Knight Rider. He's going to lose his mind when I send him a picture of this. So I got to stop and shoot a couple photos here. So looks like we have some of the um, cars from the Indiana Jones movie. So some of the old German cars and American cars from World War II along with one of the motorcycles. Um, the Knight Rider cars, right? So this is Kit. I'm not sure what the convertible Kit is. And this was been the, the like Banshee that they had, that Pontiac Banshee, which was one of the cars they were using as one of the new Knight Rider shows. We've got um, the hearse from um, the Terminator 3 movie, which is pretty cool. Dennis Hopper's chopper um, from um, um, Easy Rider. We have the kit lights on this car, which is very cool. Um, again, the total rate recall taxi. Again, some of these cars mean a little less to me than the other ones do. 
Um, Shanghai Nights, again, not a giant fan of the movies. This doesn't really mean a whole ton to me. A couple of the motorcycles from the Mission Impossible movies. I don't know this car, but it looks like something was made from Michael Jackson, like a Soul Train car for, it looks like something maybe made for a movie or for a music video, which is kind of neat. Um, we've got the Willys from Fantasy Island. These are what they call like a runabout back in the day where there was like a beach wagon. These are kind of neat. We've got one of the cars from Greece, so the Grease Lightning car, very cool. The Inspector Gadget uh, limo, or not limo, a Lincoln Continental, which is very cool. And our Ghostbusters um, Cadillac, which is awesome. This was an old ambulance, a hearse, and they transformed it into the Ghostbusters car. It looks great with all the lights and everything else. So super cool. All right, so some of the Herbie the Love Bug cars, very cool. We're talking about the George Barris cars, so we have the Munsters cars. Again, these were both made by George Barris. You had the traditional Munster coach, and then you had the Dragster. And these were both super neat cars. So this would have been Grandpa's car. They were making it for Herman back in the day, so yeah. The Dragula. Barris was doing some crazy stuff back in the day with these cars, and they're all pretty neat. And again, you see these wheels on the car. These were like super common. This is again a similar wheel you see on the General Lee or the Mr. Uh, the A Team van. It's all very cool. So very neat to see. We're gonna get into the um, Starsky and Hutch Gran Torino. This car was a dog, 351. It was like a 74, 75. Way too big for the amount of power that I had. This would have been a 351. All the small emissions, like 175 horse, 180 horse. Super underpowered, but with these mag wheels and in this color scheme, it looked awesome. This was an option from the factory. Once the show got big, you could buy a car out of the factory. It looked exactly like this car. It was this limited edition Starsky Hutch, much like you do like a Bandit Trans Am. These colors, these wheels, the 351, the automatic on the uh, on the column, right? It wasn't a console automatic. It was a column automatic. You could get it. It was neat. And these have become highly desirable the last few years, so pretty neat. And this one looks like it's actually one of the cars from the TV show. Now we get into the, the two Robocop cars, the, more, the older car and the newer car. The new Robocop was fine. The older car was very cool. You know, you got into the old Tauruses, which looked super futuristic back then. So it made sense that they would use that car as a futuristic car. And, you know, that body style still holds up today. It was very futuristic at the time. I remember being in school. My teacher worked for, uh, her husband owned a Ford dealership. And she would always come with the Aerostars, the Tauruses. And we were blown away back in the mid 80s when we see these like futuristic cars coming out. Very cool old school limo, looks like from Benjamin Button. I don't need to say anything about this car. The DeLorean obviously is huge. So this is a very cool room with all the uh, the classic cars from the TV shows, Great Gatsby era. This would be some of those retro futuristic cars from the you know, 30s, 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, which just looked great. Um, this car is stunning. We saw one of these at the, um, at the show over in Norfolk, which I really didn't know the car all that well, and it was a yellow one. This one's a lot nicer. That's a beautiful car. But again, you go through and take a look at just how gorgeous all this stuff. These Cadillacs, you, you know my proclivity for the old Cadillacs. They're stunning. Um, this is a Series 62 limo. Uh, just an absolutely beautiful car. So we got one of the Buick. This is beautiful as well. I mean, the colors are just so cool back then. The lines, everything was just really cool. Like, it's so hard to say. Like, and again, I told you these aren't my favorite, but when I look at these and I think about the style and the chrome and, you know, everything goes into it. And you think about driving on the road and these colors are phenomenal. I mean, you know, we're kind of lost because we, we, we live in this black and white time frame from what we saw back then. So I love going to see these old cars live because even the, like the deep reds and the reds you'd have, but there were so many greens and yellows and blues that just really popped and looked gorgeous. And you see like, again, you look at these Buicks, right? Like you start to think about like Cadillac and Lincoln at the time, but you see this Buick 8. Now this would have been like your doctor or lawyer in the neighborhood that would have bought this car. And there was, there was a lot of history of this. They didn't buy the Cadillac because they didn't want to, you know, have their customers think they were taking advantage of them. So they buy the Buick and the Buick was like that upmarket car. It was gorgeous. I mean, it's this, this beautiful green Chrysler, right? This, these cars just all have so much style and they exude the style of this. This is a, 39 Cadillac Series 31, again, absolutely stunning. You know, this would have been more, um, you know, this gets very subdued from a color standpoint, but this is, again, the ultimate opulence. In the 1930s, if you had this car, you would absolutely made it. You were incredibly successful, and this was the epitome of the American dream back then, so it's so cool. All right, guys, we're gonna head up and down this row right here. There's a couple of cars I caught my eye, this Packard did, but there's a couple more sections over here. There's a Chrysler section we're gonna walk into, and you can see some of the old Jeeps. As we come over here, the Willys, which is pretty cool. 
We're gonna head over and take a look at what he has for some of these Chryslers. We're looking mainly 50s Chryslers. And then there is a muscle car section we're gonna go over too. We still have the whole James Bond section as well. So there's a lot of stuff in here. So when you get into this Chrysler stuff, you know, there isn't kind of the usual you think about with all the, um, you know, the Hemis and the Challengers and Chargers. This is a lot of 50s, uh, you know, Chrysler, and a lot of beautiful 50s Chryslers. The Imperial right here in the gold. This four door is gorgeous. Again, that's a, such a great color, right? So again, I think about, you know, that lost in, in time is those colors, but this is such a stunning color. That mint green was really prevalent back then. And you see another similar version of it here in this Imperial, right? And you see the tail fins and the style, just absolutely gorgeous cars. So obviously he was a fan of the big body Chryslers, right? You know, the full size sedans and the full size coupes. Uh, this Imperial right here is gorgeous in the silver. I mean, you take a look at the, the, you know, you had kind of that continental kit in the back, but you take a look at that back window and that roof line on that C pillar, everything just flowed through so nicely. You get the Imperial before it in a similar style. You can see the evolution of where these cars were going. Um, and they're absolutely both gorgeous. I actually like this slightly newer Imperial than the older one here. Um, even though you know, I love the taillights on that car. That rocket inspired taillights is amazing. And again, this was what was happening in the 50s in America. So just such cool body lines. And again, think about all the workmanship that would have to go in to make this body. Cause there's like so many different panels. You have different lines, different everything all across the borders you're making this car. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And then the grill on this car here is again, stunning. All right, now we're heading into the, what they call their muscle car section. So we've got a cool old, uh, it looks like an old, it's an old Ford or old Chevy. Let's say an old Chevy, 54 maybe, 55, yeah, 54. The side pipes, getting a little sporty import, not my thing. 25th anniversary um, Corvette, so it would have been a 1978. This was the pace car that year. So this was the black and silver. This car has become highly desirable. There's a ton of these out there with low miles. There was one near us at Corvette Mike's that was selling for like $35,000 with like 800 miles, delivery miles on it, it was awesome. It was like a 75 uh, Trans Am. We've got a couple of the big body Mustangs. So the 70, 71, 72, 73 in the Mach 1s and the red and the yellow. We've got a little bit of a newer Z28, so late 70s here um, would be my guess. The Cadillac Elante, which again, man, I wish this car had done better. This was car was Cadillac trying to do something to compete with like the Mercedes two seat cars. It was very cool. And what you have on this car was Pininfarina style body. Unfortunately, it was Cadillac's like four, you know, four liter V8, uh, V8 which was a nightmare. It had all kinds of head problems. Um, so it just wasn't super reliable. So again, wasn't the best car, um, but style wise, I think it's amazing. And again, I would love to pick up something like this because I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Now, the cool thing is too, like if you're looking to buy into these cars, they're selling these cars, right? So here's a cool sign here. If you see something in the museum you really like, you can reach out to them and find out if it's for sale, which is very cool. We got an SL500. Again, this car was pretty neat. Um, th these at the time, again, were really good high performance cars, super comfortable. They would tend to run into issues as they get older, you know, as the more miles they get on them, they have some electrical problems, some of the mechanical issues. So these cars were stupid expensive new, but you could pick them up and get a great deal on them as they got used. And right now you can still find one, you know, for relatively cheap money. That looks amazing. A couple of cool dune buggies, uh, again, air cooled, love the wheels on. This one like a Baja bug, which is very cool with the KC lights, which is such a cool car. And then I dig this old drag truck. So this is really cool. So we have a cab over truck. They threw the slicks on the back, the wheels, put, dumped the motor in the back. So this would have been like a wheelie machine with obviously the side pipes, or the, uh, you know, the exhaust pipe stacks come out of the back of it. So very, very neat car. So we've got a little bit of a Lightning McQueen car here. A little, you know, a little, I don't know if it's, actually I don't even know if it's like an electric car. I'm not sure what that is. So that's kind of neat. Oh, the Hudson Hornet. Okay. So some of the stuff you'd have from some of the movies and TV shows back then, which is kind of neat. We have a couple of really pretty cars here. So we have this gorgeous Mercedes, a really nice looking 911, and then this really cool 50s inspired car. Again, I'm willing to bet any amount of money this is based on a Corvette chassis. Seeing the center exhaust is probably a C6 chassis. So we'll see if there's any more information on it. But this looks like a C6 chassis with an LS motor. So this is a North Star motor, so I'm not sure what's in it. But this was a kind of like a 50, 57, 58 style Chevy based on definitely on a Corvette platform. So it looks very, very cool. But it's got a North Star V8, so it could be actually based on a, a Cadillac platform, which is also pretty neat to see them go through and do something like this on that platform. So very, very cool car. Guys, holy cow, this is a big museum. Um, we're gonna go through and get into the Batmobiles now. 
So obviously the Tim Burton car is over here. The George Barris car from the 60s Batmobile movie. Um, this is really neat. And you see this is like the first gen of the Batmobile from the Tim Burton movies. And then as they got more crazy, um, and you got to the Joel Schumacher movies, they got like way over the top, right? You had all the, all the um, neon. The cars got really, really big. The wings got nuts. So it was a similar style um, to what you have for the previous car, but it got really big and really insane. The Batboat from the 60s movie, again, one of the 60s inspired cars. We have a couple of those here. Uh, you also have the Bat Bike which was kind of neat with the sidecar. We've got, um, yeah, so this one's actually real. That's pretty cool. That's one of the original ones from the movies. Very, very cool. Again, another version of the, you know, the, the, the Tim Burton uh, Batmobile, the car that was in the first Batman, which is kind of cool. They got really thin, uh, which is pretty neat. The Bat bike, another Bat motorcycle. So these are all really cool cars. And again, as you go through, you always miss a couple of the really cool details in this, but you have the really cool Bat, you know, hubcaps that wouldn't spin. The double bubble, the exhaust in the back, all the back gadgets and everything, the light. This was pretty neat. So this was a really cool car. And this was based on a Lincoln Futura platform. I'm trying to think of the name of the car that they would have called it back then. It was a uh, concept car, excuse me. They bought the concept car and actually turned it into the Batmobile, which is very cool. Like they paid like next to nothing for the concept car because back then they destroyed them all. So we've got another nice cool like old school Jeep over here. Again, we have the Dark Knight car. You can see all the Batmobile stuff. We're gonna go down this way in the museum and come back around the other way. So it looks like they have a section dedicated to Cuban cars, which is such a cool story to think about. Like the stuff in Cuba, they didn't have any imports for such a long time. So what was going on with a lot of those cars? They were taking old American cars and just keeping them up and running. So I'm not sure if that's this is, I saw the Cuban thing here, but it looks like this is just a bunch of older American cars, um, which is very cool. You know, Plymouth fire car this pontoon, uh, Chevy pontoon boat car, which most likely would have been used for some type of, you know, river rescue or something like that. And this does like have some Cuban heritage to it, so that's very cool. You can see all these old Plymouths, the old Chevys and Chryslers and Fords, beautiful Cadillac, 53, 60, 62 series. Another Plymouth, a little Chevy with <laughs> Advertising the Power Glide two speed automatic transmission. Another great looking Plymouth, a Willys. Get a DeSoto down the end. One of the lead sleds, uh, 50s. You know, I'm a big fan of these 50s Mercury's or Ford's. Um, they just have such a good look with the louvered hood and the lowered setup. This one looks really cool with the side pipes. Um, so, yeah, this is pretty cool. And then, again, if you're a San Antonio, you see a, like a cool wooden wagon, you always got to take, um, you know, you got to take a picture. There's a couple of really cool Woodies right here as well video and it wasn't my my intention but there's a lot of stuff in here like a holy a cow a lot of stuff is here so see he's got some military stuff up here a couple of more jeeps so we go over and check out these military cars as well all right so we're gonna go into the military car section so what a lot of people don't realize is when the Jeep was made, I don't think this is a Jeep as a Jeep, it was a contract that went out for World War II and it was made by Willys, it was made by Ford, a bunch of people were making these first gen Jeeps and they lasted until like the 80s when you get into the Humvees and the Humvees would last for another like 35 years. But you had a lot of different cars that would go through and you'd have the, obviously the, the German and the British uh, along with the American cars and all these cool different variations. Even these like crazy little machine gun platforms which I always remember seeing as a kid was just crazy, um, you know, what they would make out of these. Um, but they were just neat. You know, again, it was a 50 cal machine gun thrown on this little small cart that could go anywhere in the desert or go out in the jungle and it was tiny. And you have some of these arm, you know, mechanized armored vehicles. You see even like this little Volkswagen that was converted into a truck. Some of these amphibious vehicles that could go anywhere. So there's a lot of neat little stuff in here that you could kind of take anywhere. And you think about like the history of what these were. I can tell you as somebody who was an infantry soldier, like any opportunity to get in any motorized vehicle for me in the field was an absolutely amazing opportunity. And I was incredibly grateful when I could. Um, so, you know, any, any soldier that had the chance to drive one of these was pretty happy that they weren't on their feet, um, you, know, you know, marching with all their gear. So, and you'll see like the deuce and a halves over here, some of the military ambulances. You know, we shoot these where we can. We get a pretty good example of these at some of the shows we go to, which is pretty neat. Um, but you'll see again a bunch of these military jeeps, super basic, 
like a 40 horsepower four cylinder with a you know three speed manual transmission with a real rudimentary um, you know four wheel drive system but it worked and it would go anywhere and they were super reliable and, and you could fix them really easily because there wasn't a lot of parts to break now this is kind of like we see now they call them the duck boats but these were like amphibious cars that you could say amphibious boats you could take and they could drive them on land and water these are used actually up in boston near us to do these tours up near us um, around um, you know all, all of Boston and they have the duck tours and you'll see them like the parades for different shows they'll end up taking these cars through there so that's pretty neat too but again yeah just a really cool selection of old school military uh, vehicles and memorabilia I'm gonna shoot this I have no idea what it is I'm guessing it was something that was made for a movie obviously this was never a real life vehicle the military used but it looks like a movie prop but it's pretty neat looking uh, which is pretty cool mid 50s we have a little Thunderbird room here these retro birds, unfortunately, didn't sell as well as I could. It looks like he has all the colors, too. Um, so they bought all these retro birds, which came out in the early 2000s, which were pretty nice cars. I mean, the first year, I think the first or second year, one car of the year. Um, and, you know, they went back to the good colors. Like, the first one, I really liked that color a lot. Same thing with this color here. Um, they had a little small V8. I think it was like a 5.3 liter, uh, you know, 200 horse, decent fuel mileage. It was comfortable. You could take the top off. It was a hard top or soft top. They were pretty good driving cars. They were reliable. They just weren't particularly sporty. Um, and, you know, the transmission was a little, you know, lackluster. So when you bought these cars, if you bought it, it had this kind of sporting pretense and there wasn't a lot of sport to it. So it didn't get as much love as it potentially could have. But it was still a pretty nice little car and they were, um, they were fun, right? It was, again, it was something you could buy and drive. And, you know, this was designed for an older customer. They just didn't buy it in the numbers they needed for Ford to keep the Thunderbird alive. I don't think the Thunderbird is always going to be dead. I think you'll see some cool version of the future. Potentially even like an electric version of it, which I think would be pretty neat. All right, so we're coming to another American car section again with another beautiful Cadillac. Another 1941 Series 62 limo in black. We've got a couple of the civilian Jeeps that would come out. So these Jeeps would now be ready for the public. You could buy them. A lot of farms, a lot of small municipalities would buy them because they were small. They were easy to fix, easy to use. Um, you know, we get the Studebaker right here with kind of that futuristic front end. I've got a little Etzel Ranger. I know somebody looking for one of these. Actually, I think he's looking for the Citation. This is a 60. This is an Etzel wagon. So the Etzels were, again, a huge, huge marketing disaster for Ford. Over the years now, I think with that horse collar style on the front, I think they actually look pretty cool and different. So I think there's a little bit of love for them now, but they were not incredibly successful when they came out. Let's see if we can, you know, if, uh, I'm wondering if it's like a presidential limo. Yeah, so Trump's limo from 1980. Um, it's pretty cool. So this is kind of neat to see these 80s, you know, Cadillac limos. Got a couple of Plymouths, a really nice Oldsmobile Super 88, another nice Cadillac, 57 Chevy in a four-door, which again, I always shoot the four-doors because you don't see them. This is pretty neat. So these Packard Caribbeans, you know, it's funny, my dad, before he passed away, we were talking about these cars and he was talking about how the hoods, the hood mints on these were like super desirable and they ran a junkyard and these were, they, they were junking these like crazy. And you think about the worth of what they have now. My dad passed away almost 10 years ago. We were talking about that and like how much they're worth now. And if we wish we had them, right? Because they were just there, they were readily available. And you take a look at a front end like this and how gorgeous the style is on it. And these were just junk cars after a while. And the ornamentation and you know, the desire to have these now is incredible. So another DeSoto here. Is that a Mercury Montclair? Yeah, a Mercury Montclair in a really cool purple. Again, my wife would love that lavender color. This Dodge is beautiful. This is like a 60. So this was the best to show at one of the cars we had. Not this one, but a similar two-door. And I love the style on this. The fins are amazing. This is just an absolutely gorgeous car. Everything about this was right. This would have been most likely that cross rim platform on the V8 too with the dual four barrels. This is a really cool performance car that had an amazing style back then. And then obviously some of the first generation Corvettes and a couple of C1s and a C2 always. No, actually, I'm sorry, all three C C1s. So this is what we talked about before. This would have been the first generation C1. And this first generation, you'd see the older tail lights. Then you get into the second iteration of the C1 where you get into the more modern tail lights. And then the last version, which is like a 62, where you have the more modern version of the rear end, which you'd find in like the 63s and 64s. This is cool to see these three together like this because you can see again the first kickoff of it, the second version, and then this. And you have in red, white, and blue. This is an awesome setup. So I might actually shoot this as my cover photo because this is a really cool setup on these beautiful C1s. And now we head into the microcar section. I knew he said he was a microcar fan. And holy cow, there's a ton in here three-wheelers, little mini Jeeps, electric, gas-powered. This was, um, I forget, 
Reliant Robin, I think these are called. They always flipped them over on top gear. I believe it's a Reliant Robin that was a three-wheeler that they said was like stupidly unstable. And again, you see these little Fiats. We shot that little, um, you know, the Mini, and we also shot the uh, Isetta. You get these little crazy cars, man. They were 10, 10 inch wheels, really small displacement, but you can go anywhere with them and have fun. This was, um, on counting cars, they redid one of these, an electric car. I think Rolly redid one. And it was kind of neat, and he had sported, you know, made it kind of sporty. It was pretty cool looking. Again, this is something that's so different, guys. Like, you're not going to see a ton of these. Uh, I never see them on the road anymore, right? But this is so cool to see these old, you know, micro cars, something different that you could go out. And again, I think in the, this version of the world today, where people are looking for more fuel efficient cars, electric cars, like, I think there's a call for something like these, these little city cars. My, my, my best friend actually just bought a, a Tesla, and we were talking about, you know, using the electric car, you know, the downside of, you know the charging and stuff and you think about these little electric cars that don't weigh uh, these little minis that don't weigh anything imagine we get back into these and these little runabouts for the city would be absolutely amazing this might have actually been the one on counting cars i think it's the same thing i think it's the bond bug but it's a four four wheels versus two uh but i might be wrong but yeah it was neat i remember seeing the car back then and we'll kind of get this packed version um you can see this limo back here so we're going to stay out of here but this thing's crazy. This thing's a hundred feet long, guys. Just to give you some perspective as we go along with the jacuzzi and the helipad. Absolutely insane. All right, so I didn't get these cars when I first came in. So we've got a little Galaxy Starliner right here with Elvis in it. We've got an old Model T. We've got a couple of older cars here, Trike. We got this crazy Elvis style car. But there were a couple I wanted to hit on. You know, this mini, this bus is pretty cool. Um, this Mercury Pace car is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this car is one of the prettiest cars here. This is an awesome color. We had this car, I think we shot it when we first came in. We might have hit it a little bit. This was kind of this crazy um, car from uh, the Thunderbirds movie. Then you've got these ridiculous, this James, this James Dean tribute car. It's just based on a, you know, on, a, on a big rig chassis. This crazy old school like Marilyn Monroe custom car. Looks like it's on a Cadillac chassis. We've got this really cool mystery machine right here. We've got this amazing um, League, of Extraordinary, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen replica, which is an awesome looking car. And then this Pugs Money car over here, which is kind of crazy too. All right, so now we're in the James Bond section. And from what I've been told, all of these are original cars and props from the James Bond movies. So this is pretty cool too. Again, you know in the James Bond stuff, you're gonna have the Aston Martins, the DB7s, the DB5s, some amazing cars. So we're gonna go through and share that some really cool stuff you'd see too. So we have this little Toyota from You Only Live Twice. Another Aston Martin. This, is this a Laganda? I have to take a look. I'm not sure if it is or not. Um, these little Triumph Stag. The Mach 1 Mustang they use, which is kind of a cool car. I wanted to see the submarine car. It looks like it's here. Again, I'm not sure if it's, the, if it's the one from there, but I remember the Mustang Mach 1 in one of the uh, and one of the James Bond movies I thought was kind of cool that they were using a Mustang. Obviously different boats. One of the helicopters, some of the motorcycles, the Lotus before it became the Lotus boat, which is very cool. So the old school Esprit, which was this little turbo four cylinder before it kind of morphed into the V8. I think there's more of a, yeah, I'm gonna shoot that one over there in just a second. We're gonna go through and check out this James Bond museum section over here, which is very cool. The reason I love collections like this is this is me. If I had the money like these folks that have these car collections do, this is 100% what I would put my money into. I would have an amazing collection like this that the public could go in and take a look at. It would be just you know what I'd want to do, and this is so cool that again you can see obviously his love and passion for James Bond. I don't have that same love and passion for James Bond. Oh, that's not cool. The spy movies don't do that much for me. I mean, the John Wick stuff I think is kind of cool. Maybe they're born that are a little more gritty. The stuff that's a little bit more cartoony. Now I will tell you, I've seen a couple of the Dan, uh, Daniel Craig movies and I think they're great because they're a little bit more rough and a little bit more realistic, so that's kind of neat. But again, as a kid, this was so cool to see like these, these Esprit that became a submarine with a you know torpedo hanging out the back in a port, uh, periscope. And then this gorgeous Esprit right here. Um, so again, you get some more of the Lotuses. This is pretty cool. I mean, there was a big uproar, uh, uproar when, you know, Bond went away from like the British cars and just some of like the German stuff when you get like the BMWs and stuff. So that was kind of, uh, you know, kind of people got pretty heated up back then, but I still think it's very, very cool.
this tree, this jag is pretty cool. This was in dye another day. This is uh, such a great color in the green. You get the little missiles in the front. And that is the I, is that the I-8? The Z8, yeah, excuse me, this was, this was a super desirable car. These are going for a lot of money now. Hoobie's been talking about one of these on his channel. They're selling for $150,000, $200,000 now, so very cool. See a little Land Rover here. Another one over here, we have another Lotus Esprit. Got one of the Audis, obviously one of the James Bond planes, which that's pretty cool too. So yeah, this stuff is pretty cool, guys. All right. So, guys, when you leave the auto museum, there's like a whole other part of the cars here. We've got some of these like 19 and 21 window vans on VWs, which are stupid expensive. Um, we've got a car, you know, one of the car trucks, and I caught the car boats, excuse me. We've got this really cool VW pickup, another one over here. So again, as you're walking through, there's actually a lot of stuff over here that I didn't even see, and this is not near the car museum, which is crazy. It's all by the go-kart track. So this is pretty interesting. We've got an, an NSX here. Wow. So again, a lot of cool stuff here. So wow, this is just huge. And I'm trying to see what else is the rest is here. Because I don't even know what else they have it. This, I think there's an arcade. Um, you know, they've got some little motors you can buy the you know dirt bikes and stuff. This is crazy. Alright, it's like here to make my way around. So we have another back to the future car in a different area. Oh, it's like Flintstones down kind of cool too. It's like a fan area. I was just joking, I came in and it was nice to have to leave it a little bit it's like you're coming into a damn hurricane i know it's supposed to rain a little bit today that's the thing when you come to orlando this time of year you never know what it's going to do so they actually have an indoor place where you can hang out for a little bit and i'm not on one of the theme parks right now Right, guys what a better place for me to finish my video here at the Deezerland Auto Museum than in front of this gorgeous Aston Martin and this beautiful Rolls Royce in the James Bond section if you're in Orlando it's $30 come and check out the museum there's 2,000 vehicles it's a very eclectic mix of vehicles there's tons of cool stuff um, as I said like there's not like the crazy usual stuff you expect to see I didn't see any Chevelles or Camaros there's some Mustangs here there's some unique um, European cars, there's stuff from all the countries all over the world. You have the Russian cars and Israeli cars, you know, this, the European stuff, tons of Americana, lots of great stuff from the early cars, generation 20s, 30s, 40s, tons of 50s stuff, the James Bond collection, the movie used cars, the Batmobiles. So it's a great selection of cars. Come check it out. There's so much cool stuff you can see for yourself. So again, I always want to share these videos with you on all these cool museums. This is one of the cooler ones I've been to because it's so different and so unique and it's not just this, you know, like I think about Newport, which is my favorite car museum. The cars there, are inevitably like nicer cars. There's some really nice stuff here that's in really great shape. I mean, some of these James Bond cars are stunning, but like every car in that museum is like museum quality. There's stuff here that's driver quality, which is also very cool because you get this whole different vibe of what you'd see. Plus the, just the feeling of bringing the 50 stuff to life here with the really cool colors and styles. I really do like that. So five minutes from Universal Studios, 30 bucks, come and check it out. It's an awesome place. I'm gonna go check out the rest of the, 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 the facilities. There's all this cool stuff here to do, but that's it guys. If you haven't done it so far, please hit that like and subscribe. Fox Body Phantom. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks.